Hello, I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations and we have a fun craft for you today. And I have a fun helper in the shop with me today. This is my granddaughter, Ellie. Hi. And Ellie, you are how old? I'm five years old. But when will you be six? In October 12th, I'll be six. So you're gonna be six very soon. So you're five, almost six, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, I thought because she was gonna be helping me in the shop today that we could do a fun craft that I've been meaning to try and check out because I've seen that they can look super cute. So we're gonna be making a, do you remember what we're making? Um, a, a, um, a faux roof. <laughs> a wreath. Uh -huh. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> so to start with, we're gonna be using a coat hanger for our shape. And I'm just going to attempt to cut it, but I don't have great sharp cutters here in the shop. So because you need like um like a sharp 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 scissors, you have to be very careful because it'll cut you. Yes, it'll cut. Right. These are the kinds of cutters you need: a couple of tin snips, a little bit of muscle, right? So you want to be very careful because these. Yes. So, all we're going to do is we're going to kind of straighten this out, make it into kind of a rough circular shape. And what you can do is kind of wrap it around something round if you have that to be able to help form that shape or, a little bit. Or, or just kind of muscle your way through it. Or if you, or if you like have a, a, one of these, like a wire hanger, like one of those, like my grandma has. Um, she, um, you guys can, you can like, um, like make your own, your own wreath. That's the idea. We're going to explain how to do it so that they can do this at home, right? Yeah. So, so this craft, one wire hanger, and we have a big bag of like coffee these. filter papers from the dollar store. Now what I did do was I took these and I dunked them in coffee, wrung them out, shook them out, tossed them in the dryer, just so that they weren't kind of that brighter white color. You don't have to use coffee, you could stain them with tea if you wanted, or just diluted paint, which means you could do this then in any color that you wanted. So if you wanted to have a dark green wreath or a blue or an orange for Halloween so that form the shape of a pumpkin, you could do it. So what Ellie is going to do is she's gonna take these one by one and carefully, because that's a little pokey, you're going to poke that into the middle of the paper, right? Super easy and just slide it down. Right? So we can add decoration on the paper, right? So, no, we're not. We're gonna have it nice and, and plain looking, but we want all of these on there. So it starts to get very full and create a really big fat wreath. Now I'm gonna be as careful as I can and poke my way through. And, That's perfect. And, and slide it down with the others all the way to the top. Yep. And keep going over and over. Yes, with our whole big, huge garbage bag. Right? Mm -hmm. Look how many you have to do. So make sure it's kind of, wait, wait. Make sure it's kind of in the middle. So oh. see how, because then you're going to have a big stick out section and just a little tiny section. So we want it kind of in the middle so that they all stay about the same size. Right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be very careful to try to get stores in the middle. I just have them in the big garbage bag because I have the overhead fan going. And um, if they're loose, they just start blowing all over the shop. And then we're spending our day chasing them rather than getting our craft done. Right? Yeah. And like, and we got lots to do today. Yes. I told her that there was a lot of work ahead of her. So we are just going to carry on and you can you can double triple quadruple them up and if you, you if you have a younger one helping you then have them do them one at a time it will be easier for them but if you're helping then you can add multiples on at a time like, that's fine like three or four uh, but not lots at a time not like 10 at a time 
Watch no. where you stick it. Okay, so we're going to carry on here and get these done. And when we get closer to the end, we'll join back. All right, good luck. Okay, we have the wreath part done and it's nice and full, which is what I wanted. I ultimately ended up using um, almost, almost entirely three full packs of the filters, which had a hundred in each. So probably I have a few left because I thought maybe I might need to make a flower or two um, to decorate with. So maybe I've got about 20 left, 15 to 20 left, um, which I could have easily fit on here. But um, I wanted it nice and full. You can see it's very puffy. It smells a little like coffee because that's what I stained it with. But, um, you know, I just used a little bit of duct tape to hold it together, which we're not going to see once we're finished. So really what it comes down to now is just doing bows and decoration and things like that. And you can see too that, you know what, um, I didn't have my my wire particularly round and that's okay it it still looks nice and round anyway and you can kind of fluff this baby up and out and if you wanted it to um if you think that too much of it is lying too flat just go in and scrunch a couple of them up and then it will give you a little bit more dimension in there if that makes sense so okay I'm 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 digging this I'm, I'm loving that so far so what I do have is I have thought that I would do a big bow at the top but I wanted to stay in the natural colors so I have a piece of drop cloth fabric that I stained in the same coffee and you can see that now you can see um, that it went a little bit darker, which I'm cool with. So I have just kind of cut it to just a, a fake length and I'm just going to lay it over with a little bit of an overlap in the center. Nothing major, but a little bit. Then I have a piece of sheet, just like a, a light cream colored sheet that I got from the thrift store. And I'm going to lay that over top of that and just have that sort of overlapping as well. So roughly the same length. Then I have a piece of burlap <laughs> that I'm going to do the same thing with. So again, bringing in a little bit of those darker tones. And then I have another piece. Um, and you can see that, maybe you can't see, I'm going just slightly thinner for each of these layers. Nothing major, but a little bit. And then this last layer is, is thinner still. Sorry, I got a bunch of little, little threads that I'm leaving. And that one's thinner still. So I'm just really looking at doing kind of a big puffy kind of floppy bow there. And, um, you know, just having it all dangle. This, is just part of the seam on the sheet that I had. So when you go to kind of rip them in pieces or cut them in pieces, take off the seam that's sewn edged, um, but keep it because then that becomes a great tie. So all I'm going to do is use that to tie my bow. And I'm gonna do it um, so that I have these long cords dangling down and so what I'm going to try and do is rather than just squishing it I'm going to try and pinch it together a little bit and then pull my bow tight All right and just seal it off with a knot so that I end up with just that flat ribbon on the front and then I get to just kind of flop these out kind of pull them out, separate them a little bit from the sides and just kind of flop them out so that I have just this big kind of floppy bow, which is perfect because our wreath doesn't look um, 
all very precise and, and organized. So I didn't want something that looked like a really pristine, sharp-edged bow on it. I didn't think that that would necessarily work. So ultimately, we're going to be attaching that up here, right? So that we'll have all of those strings hanging. And what I wanna do is have a few more strings hanging. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of loose threads there. So this will have that, and then I wanna have a little bit more color. So um, I'm gonna have more of these things in various lengths. So I just have some pieces of pretty much all the different segments and I've got the cords that were tied up. So I'm just going to tie these together. I'm just thinking, I'm just gonna tie them right on there. Because why not? I'm just gonna tie them on to that top edge of my coat hanger. Let them hang down in front. I'm just going to trim off all those little threads that are driving me crazy. And then I'll use those two little cords that I tied my bow with. And I'll just tie this on. So the nice thing is because these ties and the bow are all just tied on there, I can switch them out very easily. So if I wanted to add in a different color or a little bit more texture or something, very, very easy to do. And I just cords hanging down the front. So, so the only thing that I'm gonna do is maybe take a look at it and I'm gonna trim these off about here. And I think that looks okay. I'm gonna take a closer look and if I decide to do a little bit of a flower, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But I need to, I need to peruse it first and see how it's hanging. So I'll be right back. What I am looking at is covering up just that front of that bow area. So I like the bow, I like the, the dangle part. I'm not as fond of this big kind of plain space. So what I am thinking is that I might try making kind of like a flower out of some of the rest of the coffee filters and what I'm thinking is this on its own is too big like if I started layering these that's going to be too fat so I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is kind of squish over one side and make it a little bit smaller crunch the crunch <laughs> crunch um, the little center together and do the same on the next one put a little bit of oops, put a little bit of hot glue in there and then where the fold over is, just alternate that next sheet so that as we do more of them and we kind of create a little bit of a, of a layover, I'll start moving that around. So it'll start adding a little bit more um, depth and texture to it, but it will go around in a circle as we go around. And as we start to scrunch this, <laughs> I'm gonna slowly start overlapping a little bit more of it and squishing the center to start making a little bit smaller each time as well. So that as we start moving in toward that center, I can start kind of 
making the center start being a little bit smaller so that it starts um, forming a little bit more of the center of the flower and they're just not all layered on top of one another. So I'm kind of, if you see, I'm kind of scrunching the center together so that it starts kind of laying over each other, but it starts being a little bit smaller as well. And um, I'm hoping that the hot glue catches that. Okay, so you can see that it's starting to move in toward itself. I will say this, I did have a couple of fabric flowers that I had made off to the side, both a little rose and another little one that I was debating and I think I'm gonna pop one into the center. So if you're interested, put into the comments and maybe what I can do is I have a number of the roses, the turned flowers, I have some of these little cut ones, I have some burlap flowers, and I tend to do a, a number of them all at once so that I can use them at different times for different projects, so the different sizes, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in knowing how to do this, drop a note in the comments and then one of my upcoming videos, I can always just do a fabric flower tutorial. So we'll do, and I tend to do all the natural colors just because um, they tend to fit into everything, but you can do them um, in any color that works for you and especially based on whatever project you're working on. And uh, some of them you can do with ribbons and that kind of thing. So I'm not a pro, but then I'm really not a pro at anything that I'm doing. <laughs> on any of these, I just tend to fake it. So the nice thing is, is I always figure if I'm faking it and it works out okay, then you are guaranteed some success with it. So I'm thinking that it might look good with that rose in the center. That just kind of looks a little bit finished. So let's, let's pop that flower in. Let me get a, a whack of glue down in there. Again, all my, all my technical terms for you, you know. Scrunch it, whack a glue. <laughs> you know, that's how I roll. Okay, and so, and I need to tape this up better, but let me just for the sake of argument here, show you we're just gonna glue that big guy right up in there and have all of these of all of these dangles. So I'm gonna glue that up. I just have to tape this up a little bit better. Um, and then I will attach it right in there. And then I will hang this up and take some pics and show you. So guys, I think this is super cool for a really neutral cottage, kind of cottage core sort of, um, you know, almost like a French, French country kind of look. You can certainly switch this up by dyeing these any color you want. So you just take a bit of paint in a lot of water and you can add in like a nice pale, pale color in, in pinks or, or blues or greens or whatever's gonna fit your decor. And then you can do similar with different patternings and uh, looks with this. So adding in different colors with your bow to be able to um, match with it. So it's got a lot of flexibility. You don't have to stay in the neutral tones like I did. I'm just looking at um, what tends to sell a little bit better in my area right now. But um, Lord knows if you look at my furniture, I love color. So uh, something like this is great because it's gonna mix and match with, with anything within my shop. So it's perfect that way. But I'm just gonna get this glued on and the repair done and we'll see how it goes. So if you get this a try, I'd love to see pics. Let me know if you do want to, to learn how to make some of the, the flowers and I'll set up the camera to be a little bit closer so that you can see if you want. Um, it's really about what's, what's helpful to you, but uh, give this a go. This was a lot of fun actually and I really like how it turned out. Super simple and as you can see, you know, with, with my granddaughter being here, helping out. <laughs> Um, 
it's it's a pretty easy craft to get kids involved in too because they can be stuffing all of these 300 filters on on the uh, on the coat hanger for you and um, be part of the entire process so really good to do with kids as well or just on your own in front of the television not a problem on that one so until next week thanks for tuning in Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations Give us a thumbs up if you haven't always already subscribed. I would love it if you do that. And I would probably love you more if you even share this. That would be awesome. We're looking at trying to build the channel up a little bit um, to help out with keeping coming at you. So give us a little hand if you, if you want. Either way, I'll see you next week. Take care.